inside you, all around you, and within you, He is with you. Oh, hallelujah! In the morning, in the evening, and you're coming, and you're going, and you're weeping and rejoicing. He is for you, 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 He is for you. because you're declaring what the Word of God says. And, you know, you've heard us talk lots and lots about how our words have power. The Bible says in Job that we shall also decree a thing or say a thing, and it shall be established unto us. And so if we're going to be speaking something out of our mouths, we want to speak the blessing of God. We don't want to be calling people dumb or stupid. You're never going to amount to anything. No, we want to declare the blessing of God over our lives, over our families, over our children, over our church, amen, over people that we come in contact with because what we say, our life will go in that direction. When we say it and we believe it with all of our hearts, and the more you say something, the more it gets down on the inside of you. Hallelujah. So I love seeing that. May his favor be upon us. Hallelujah. In a thousand generations, glory to God. And may his presence go before us all around.
around us. He goes before, behind, beside us. He surrounds us everywhere we go. Aren't you thankful that the Lord goes before you? Hallelujah. He's so good. Look, can we sing that verse again? May his favor. Hallelujah. And I want you to declare it. You're saying what he's already declared about you. So when you sing it, sing it with all of your heart and declare, this is my family. My family's blessed. Hallelujah. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you. He is with you in the morning, in the evening, in your coming and your going. He is for you, 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 he is for you. One more time, may his favor, may his favor be upon you. Oh, come on, his favor is upon you today. Hallelujah, the favor of the Lord surrounds you. shall prosper. Father, we thank you that the greater one lives on the inside of us. He's our helper today. And Father, we thank you. We praise you for it, God. You're so good. You're so faithful. Hallelujah. Father, we honor you. We honor you, God. We honor you, Jesus. We declare over this nation that righteousness will prevail. No weapon formed against the church shall prosper. God, you are greater. You are greater, God, and we look to you. Our eyes are upon you. We'll not be moved by what we see, by what we feel. But, Father, we're only moved by your word. Hallelujah. And your word says that we are victorious. Your word says that we are overcomers. Your word says that we are more than conquerors. And so, Father, we believe it and we receive it today. God, you're so good. You're so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't he good? Amen. Well, turn around and wave at somebody. Greet them. Let them know you're glad to see them tonight, and you may be seated. Hallelujah. It's 
Somebody say, praise the Lord. Say, he's for me. You know, we, I think sometimes we just need to remind ourselves, oh, you know what? He's for me. He's for me. Because the thought comes, oh, he's not for you. Oh, nobody's for you. You're all in this by yourself. Anybody ever felt that way? You're in this by yourself. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. He's for me. And the Bible says, if God be for me, who can be against me? You know, and I used to say it this way. It just helped me. If God be for me, who cares who's against me? Amen. Who cares what name is against me? Who cares what name? Yeah. You know, I, you kind of have to get an attitude sometimes. And when, when I was 22 and they started talking cancer and they started talking all this stuff, I had to get kind of an attitude like, who cares? He's for me. Amen. And so maybe it's, maybe it's not a cancer deal. Maybe, maybe something else. But the devil try, gets up on your shoulder and tries to tell you, oh, you're not. You're not this and you're not that. And you know what? We may not be this or that. But God is this or that. Amen. And I'm not trusting in myself. I'm trusting in the Lord. Amen. My trust isn't in me and how good I am and how, 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 uh, how much I deserve. But my trust is in the mercy of God. Amen. My only plea is the blood of Jesus. That is my only plea, the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so, we want to continue talking about praise tonight. Because praise does something that it takes my eyes off of whatever the problem is onto the answer. It takes my eyes off of the situation. And it may be my own self. It may not even be other people. You know, I can be discouraged about mistakes that I've made and how i failed. And so it may not be other people. It may be. It may be how people have treated you. Amen. It may be something that somebody said to you that's got you down or whatever. But praise just in itself uh, gets our eyes off of the problem and on to God. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to look at we're going to look at this in some scriptures here tonight. Uh, because because it is so important <coughs> you know I love talking about that and I know Miss Deborah loves preaching on that I don't think we can hear uh, heard heard one person say this um, Rhonda you'll have to help me with this is what Nancy Dufresne said can you come up here and just say that I used to, or you can just do it from right there I don't care well, just anything no no <laughs> About worship, about worship. No, no. Anyway, I'll say it. <laughs> but she said uh, somebody had spoke. I, I believe it was the Lord had spoken to her, and said, "My people." How how did she say that about praise? My people. Yeah, yeah. But it was. My people love me, I forget how, I'll have to listen back to it again, but my people love me, they pretty much love me. Or how, did, how did that say, did you write it down? <coughs> okay, you know what I'm talking about now. Oh, it's what Normal Hayes said, okay. But anyway, I thought it was her, so I got it all mixed up. But anyway, uh, praise, man. We've got to have this in our lives every day. Yeah, so can you read that so I don't mess it up any more than I already have? Yeah, it have? says, the Lord spoke uh, this to Norval Hayes. My children basically love me, but they live in poverty, sickness, and defeat. They don't live in heaven's blessings because they don't worship me enough. Isn't that interesting? How, yeah, sure. can you read that again? Sure. And then I'm going to make a, a yeah, point. Yeah, it says, that. my children basically love me. But they live in poverty, sickness, and defeat. They don't live in heaven's blessings because they don't worship me enough. Two things there. One is this. 
the Lord described that to Norval Hayes as my children love me. My children basically love me. In other words, they love him on a basic level. You know, there's a level that we can, we can just have just a basic level, just a basic relationship with God and just skip by and get into heaven. Or <clears throat> we can love God and have a relationship with him to where we possess the promises that are in the word of God. Amen. We have the choice. We, we can't leave it up to somebody else. We have the choice. Amen. Uh, the other thing is this. My, he, how did he say that? He said, they don't worship me enough. In other words, uh, we can develop that and begin to worship him more. There's more for the thankful. You remember we talked about the, remember the, the ten lepers that were healed and the one turned back and began to worship him. And he told them, he said, y'all are cleansed. Go and show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. The leper, the leper, or uh, uh, <coughs> the Samaritan, uh, turned around to Jesus and began to thank him whenever he realized that he was cleansed. And Jesus said, uh, Jesus said, uh, you're made whole. You're made whole. Because of your faith, you're made whole. There's more. See, wholeness, when you talk about leprosy, they were cleansed, but if there was an ear, ear missing, part of the nose missing, part of the cheek, or part of the arm, or a finger missing, it was still missing. Yes. That disease was stopped right where it was, and they were cleansed. Right. Jesus told him something different. Right. He said, you're made whole. Yes. Because of his praise, because he came back and he was thankful. You know, and so we can come in on that one, one level or we can develop that lifestyle of praise in our lives and there's so much more. There's so much. Uh, too many people are, are, are settling for the cleanse or the cleansing, you know, but there's so much more. There's wholeness that God has for us. Now we have to do something about it. I can't, it's not going to follow me, like Brother Hagin used to say, like ripe cherries off a tree. It's not going to follow me that way. But if I will press in in praise, if I'll begin to praise, and I'm not talking about uh, pretty praise or whatever, or church praise. I'm talking about ugly praise. And you begin to praise and you begin to magnify God. And that's where not everything rhymes. And you think, oh, man, well, that's not a song. Don't record. But go ahead and praise God. Everybody can sing. Not everybody should record. Amen. And so, so if it doesn't sound good, don't worry about it. Your praise is music to his ears. Amen. And so as we pray and praise and magnify God, you have something. Well, Go ahead. You had me come up here. Yeah. I'm going to add something to it. What I might be done preaching tonight. We'll see. No, what he's talking about is they don't worship me enough. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 34, 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hebrews 13, 5 says um, to offer up a, a sacrifice of praise to the Lord continually at yeah. all times. And, and he's talking about we need to live as believers a lifestyle of praise. It shouldn't just be when we come to church on Sundays or Wednesdays. We can actually practice the presence of God all day long and walk in that lifestyle of praise because as we do, what, what does that do? That keeps our focus on him, keeps our attention on him, and then the things that, that are going on in our, our lives, it, we don't focus on those things as much when we're focusing on him and just keeping that lifestyle. You can be going about your business at work. You don't have to run and jump and shout and everything, you know, like we would do here at church or whatever, but just under your breath, Father, I thank you. As you're doing stuff around the house, Lord, you're my healer. Lord, I thank you for touching my body. Lord, thank you for being so good. Thank you, Lord, and just cultivate and practice that lifestyle of thanksgiving because, um, like he was talking about, gratitude um, and being thankful opens a door for you to receive from God. And I like one story that Nancy uh, Dufresne talked about. She said um, this pastor was telling her 
that any time he would preach for a few months, this went on. There was this lady in his church that when he would mention something about Jesus being the healer, not disruptive or anything like that, just wherever she was kind of off to the side. But every time he talked about Jesus being the healer, all of a sudden she would just stand up and lift her hands and just quietly begin to worship God and say, Father, thank you. And he said tears would just start streaming down her face. And she wasn't disruptive in any way, but any time he talked about Jesus being the healer, she would do that. So finally, after this went on for a couple months, he was greeting her after church, and he said, could I ask you a question? And she said, sure. And he said, I've noticed that any time I talk about Jesus being the healer, you'll stand up and begin to praise and magnify God. And she starts, tears come down her face again, and she said, because... 15 years ago, I was dying with cancer, and the Lord healed me, and he raised me up. And she said, I can't help but respond when you talk about him being the healer and his goodness. It, it, it requires my respect. It requires a response from me. I just want to let him know how grateful and how thankful I am for what he did for me. Oh, my goodness, when I heard that, I was like, man, God, you're good. You know, just being grateful for the times. Just think, just right now, think back over your life, the time he provided for you when you didn't have enough money, the time he healed your babies, the time, you know, he healed you, the time he restored a relationship, the time he saved you. Where would you, some of us probably would not be alive today if we didn't know Jesus. And it putting it in that, you know, sometimes we just get busy with life and, you know, about, the, yeah, God did that for me. But that really blessed me. You know how sometimes you hear something and it just pierces you. And I thought, man, 15 years ago that happened for the lady. But still, every time she heard Jesus as the healer, she goes, I, I can't help but respond. Man, that's so good, isn't it? Man, that we could just close our Bibles and go home right there. Because that, I mean, that's good for us to remember, especially when you're going through something. Just remember what he's done previously for you and recount those things and, and, and just be like her. I can't help but respond. God's been so good to me. He's been so faithful. He brought me through. He made a way where there seemed to be no way. Glory to God. Man, when you have that kind of gratitude and thankfulness, man, that's like when my kids, you know, say thank you for different things. And I'm like, and some like Addie texted me today and just said, makes me cry thinking about it. Mom, I'm so thankful for you. I appreciate you more than you know. Man, when your kid does that and I didn't even do anything, I'm like, well, honey, what do you want? Should we go shopping? Should we do something? I want to do something for them because... I mean, I didn't even really do anything. She just wanted to tell me how much she loved and appreciated me. And so, you know, that means a lot. How much more our Heavenly Father, when we respond to him, God, you've been so good to me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for all that you've done for me. Man, some, it's just like the lepers. The one that came back was restored to wholeness. There's, there's something to that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so, <clears throat> so this... Uh, Psalm 150, verse 2, says this. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Amen. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. The Lord's been so good and so faithful. And so, uh, it demands a response on our part. Demands a response on our part. Demands, I mean, His goodness is not a small thing. He's been so good to us and so faithful. It demands a response on my part. Now, other people in the church, whatever, I can't do anything about them. What I can do is about me. It demands a response on my part. It demands a response on my part. Sometimes we'll be just doing nothing. And... And I'll hear Rhonda, and she's like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What's that doing? Man, that's keeping her heart towards the Lord. Amen. That's that praise. That praise all the time. Amen. Uh, 
Psalm 35, verse 28 says this, And my tongue shall speak of your righteousness and of your praise all day long. All day long. That means I'm constantly. There's no room for complaining. There's no room for griping. Or an Old Testament word, murmuring. There's no room for that. Because I've got, I've got marching orders that take all day. What have you been doing today? Well, one thing that I've been doing, I've been working, but also, you know what? I've been praising God all day long. All day long. Why? Because as a believer, that's the response that's, that's demanded of me. Or that's what's, uh, that's the pressure, not, not, not the pressure, but that's what, uh, that's what uh, my call is. Amen. Is all day long. All day long. I mean, all the time, just thinking about Jesus. You know, we would do a lot less complaining if our eyes are on him. Amen. Because you know what? Problems that look so big and look like there's no way, if we keep our eyes on him, oh, it looks totally different from up there. Amen. You know, the Grand Canyon, I told this, but we went on a missions trip, and we went through LAX, so we flew from Chicago to LAX to Japan, and then, I don't remember, Malaysia, yes. And so anyway, uh, but when we went over the Grand Canyon, <coughs> I know it's big. And I've never been there, but I've seen pictures. And so I know it's big, and I know it's ominous, and it's, it's deep, and, but it just looked like a little crack. As a matter of fact, the pilot said, uh, We are flying over. If you look out to your right side, you'll look down and see the Grand Canyon. And I thought, well, that's not that exciting. Well, it's not from 40,000 feet up. It's a whole different perspective. If I was down there, you know, right on the edge of it looking, I'd probably be a little bit freaking out a little bit. But from way up there, it looked totally different. What was so big down here is so small from a different perspective. Amen. And praise turns our eyes that way. So if we begin to praise and we begin to magnify God, and we actually do develop that. It's one thing to preach it. It's another thing to walk in it. It's one thing to hear it preached. It's another thing to walk in it. And really the impact on our lives is not in the preaching of it. The impact of, on our lives is in the doing of it. Amen. Where we really see the difference is not in the hearing, but in the doing. Amen. And so, and so as we do uh, this and develop praise and develop that lifestyle, all of a sudden the problems that look so big won't look so big anymore. All of a sudden the situations that used to get you down and used to get you discouraged, discouraged. You know, discouragement. The Lord told uh, Joshua, he said, uh, be courageous. What is discourage? That is the opposite of being courageous. But he didn't tell Joshua, well, now this may be a little bit strong, but you guys are kind of the crazy Wednesday night crowd, right? And so this may be a little bit strong, but he didn't pat him on the back and go, well, you know, I'll help you deal with your discouragement. He didn't tell him that. He said, be strong. In other words, if he says, be strong, he gives us the power to be strong. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And very courageous. Yeah. Be strong and courageous. How can I be doing these things? Amen. Get my eyes off the situation. Man, get my eyes on Jesus. I can be strong. Man, I can be very courageous. I can keep a smile on. Whenever I used to frown, I used to pout, and I used to cry, I can keep a smile on and a pep in my step. Amen? Amen. Because I get my eyes somewhere different. Yeah. I get my eyes on the one who, can, who makes a way where it seems like there's no way. Yeah, Amen? He's the way maker. Yeah. Like that song, he's the miracle worker. Yeah. He's the promise keeper. Yeah. Amen? If he said it, it is. People say, well, I don't know if the Bible's true. Well, I believe every word of the Bible is true. Amen. Amen. And if he said it, it's not going to be, it is. Right. 
And if I'm not experiencing, then it's a me problem, not a he problem. Amen. It's a me. Then I, I need to change something. Amen. Come on now. And so, and so we get our eyes off of the situation onto him. So Isaiah chapter 25, verse 1 says this, Lord, you are my God. Are you glad that he's your God? Man, Lord, you are my God. My God. Hallelujah. I love that. Sometimes I'll take Psalm, uh, Psalm chapter 4, or not Psalm chapter 4. What is it? Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. And it says, my God shall supply. And so I'll just break it down and I'll go, my God, my God. Lord, you're my God. Lord, you're my God. Lord, you're so-and-so's God. You're JR's God and, you know, Scott's God and David's God and all the women's God and all the men's <laughs> God. But you're theirs, but you're mine. Yeah. Amen. My God shall supply. Not going to, not maybe, not, not well if you're good enough. He didn't say that in the word. And it's God breathed. It's, it's his, his idea, his plan. Because he could have said a lot of different things, but he didn't. And so I'll take it personally. Lord, you're my God. You're my God. You supply all my need according to your riches. Amen. In glory. And just break that down. And so the scripture here says this, Isaiah chapter 25. Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. Amen. For in perfect faithfulness. I love this. It describes the faithfulness of God. Man, he's always faithful. He's always faithful. You don't ha ever have to wonder, well, I wonder if he'll be faithful this time. No, he's always faithful. This, this, this describes him, Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness, you have done wonderful things. Things planned long ago. You remember Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Is that the right? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Rhonda goes, I have no idea what you're wanting to go to. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says he planned beforehand things ahead of time. He says, I planned some things ahead of, plans for you to take, paths for you to take in the Amplified Version. Amen. A good life. Somebody say a good life. Good life. And so he's planned those things for us ahead of time. Amen. And he says this. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. Uh, I believe that I will tell of your wonderful deeds might be with other people, but a lot of times we need to tell ourselves and remind ourselves of his wonderful deeds. Hallelujah. Lord, you've been so good. Lord, you healed me. You healed me of cancer. I know that healing power is working on the inside of me right now. Healing my body. I'm walking in that. Amen. I thank you, Lord Jesus, you've provided for me. And sometimes I'll start picking out times where the Lord's provided and where the Lord's made a way. Uh, praise God. Why? Because it keeps me focused. So sometimes I need to tell myself of his wonderful deeds. Lord, you were faithful here. You were faithful here. You were faithful here. You were faithful here. And Lord... My goodness, maybe it'll dawn on me if he was faithful all these times. Why wouldn't he be faithful then? Amen. Because he's not a changing God. There's not even a, even a shadow of turning or changing with him. He is faithful. Uh, I love this scripture. Uh, Psalm chapter 42, verse 11. <clears throat> Why, my soul, are you downcast? I love that. I love that. You know, if we see ourselves and we realize, hey, you know what? I'm depressed or I'm just discouraged today. We can flip over to this and go, why? You can talk to yourself. Why are you downcast? Why is your face down? 
Why so disturbed within me? Why are you downcast? We need to talk to ourselves and say, wait a second, wait a second. You know the soul is the mind, the will, the emotions. So whenever he says soul, that's not the part that got saved. The part that got saved is not downcast. Amen. Uh, but the soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. How many of you know emotions will go up and down? And uh, he says, why, oh my soul, are you downcast? Why are you downcast? You know what? We need to ask ourselves that. When we're down and discouraged, because God's been so good and so faithful. He said this, put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Uh, I, just, I just saw this, but he said, why are you downcast? Why... Uh, why are you disturbed within me? So if I'm downcast and disturbed, then my hope is not in God. Because the answer to that is to put my trust in him. Amen. Amen. I can gauge myself where I am. Because people can say, do you trust God? Oh, yeah, I trust God. Oh, God, God's good. God's faithful. And then on Monday, I can be discouraged and down. But the answer to that discouragement, the answer to that, this will help us to not have down days. This will help us to have up days. Amen. It'll help us to have, like that old TV show, happy days. Amen. It'll help us if we'll just ask, why are you discouraged? Why are you disturbed? Only Why am I so disturbed? And he says this, he says, hope in God. If I put my hope in him and really put my trust in him. Now, trust is not, is not something that I can just do on a, on a Sunday. Trust is total reliance on him. Trust is uh, like, that, like that chair. Did, did you, uh, evidently, all of you trust that those chairs are not going to fall. Wouldn't it be a bad practical joke? to cut the legs off those chairs and, and then fall. Oh, except one time, I'll tell you this, Will, Will's going to love this. They were practicing a game for youth. Is that what you're talking about? Oh, 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 yeah, that was a different time. Anyway, um, yeah, Will was eating spaghetti at our house, and we had some chairs that were evidently not trustworthy. And... <laughs> Will's in the middle of a bite, and he's sitting there, and all of a sudden, the legs on that chair just gave and went out. He went down, and he took, took the bite, didn't spill anything, <laughs> took the bite, and we kept on eating. Anyway, but I'll, I'll tell you something. Isn't it interesting that you all trusted those chairs, evidently? Even Charlie's, like, like leaning back, and he's just totally relaxed. It's not going anywhere. Well, you know what? That's how we need to be with the Lord. You know what? When the devil says you're not going to make it, the devil says whatever. You know, he starts telling you all those thoughts. We need to be like he just said. I'm not going anywhere. It ain't going nowhere. I heard. Come on up, hon, or Elsa. Okay, well, come on up. So, <clears throat> but um, I heard one one person say this. They were talking about their paying their bills and being behind and all this stuff. And uh, they were worried about it. And finally somebody said, you know what? They can't eat you. <laughs> they can't eat you. You know? And this person, this person was like, that's true. I mean, they can't, you know, maybe I need to do some things or whatever, but they can't eat me. My life's not over because of this. Amen. Amen. This scripture in Psalm 42, 11 out of the Passion is really good. It says, so I say to my soul, don't be discouraged. Don't be disturbed, for I know my God will break through for me. Isn't that good? Yeah. So I say to my soul, don't be discouraged. Don't be disturbed, for I know my God So we're going to do that tonight. You might want to come up play but we're going to do that tonight stand up with us hey hon i need that hopefully you didn't get out of that okay 
And so we're going to say to our souls tonight, amen, we're going to take authority over some things tonight, amen, because there's been, there's, I don't know what everybody's going through, but I just, in, in my heart, I just know there's been some people that are discouraged and down and, or else I wouldn't preach this message. You may say, well, I'm up. Well, you're not everybody in here. You know, there are different people going through different things and different people facing different things. But we're going to take some authority. We can take authority over that discouragement. You don't have to have a down day or a discouraged day. Amen. We don't have a lot of days left before Jesus splits the sky. Amen.
tries to push you around, you're supposed to be here and he tries to push you over here. You're in faith and he tries to push you over here to fear because of a thought, I refuse to be disturbed. I'm supposed to be right here. I'm staying right here. I'm staying right here. And I'm not going to be moved over here. And I'm not going to be moved over here. I'm just staying right in the middle. And I'm just saying, Lord, I don't understand everything. And I don't actually know how this is going to work out. But I know that you're faithful. Amen. Yeah. And I trust you. Yeah. I trust you. I trust you. And two minutes later, 30 seconds later, when the thought comes, I don't know if he's going to come through this time. I don't know if it's going to work out this time. But you know what? I, I, I can't speak to that. But I can speak to this. I trust the Lord. Yeah. He's always faithful. Yeah. He's always faithful. Yeah. Lord, you're faithful. Yeah. Lord, I trust you. I trust you. I refuse to be discouraged. I refuse to be disturbed. If it's disturbing me, then I'm, I'm just going to turn my eyes. You know what? We have to respond to and answer discouragement. And answer that disturbance. And answer. If you start feeling like, man, I'm disturbed. Anybody ever just gotten mad? I mean, you felt, you just felt like, oh, something's not right. And man, I woke up and Ron has told me before and the girls have told me, they're like, what is wrong with you? Well, you know what was happening? I was being disturbed. Amen. And you know what else? Because I was yielded to that, I was being a total jerk to my family. And they said, what is wrong with you? And then I get thinking about, I'm like, what is wrong with me? <laughs> what is wrong with me? And so, some, so sometimes we just kind of jerk the slack out of ourselves and say, wait a second. Yeah. Wait a second. This isn't God. Am I, am I acting this way? Am I discouraged because I'm thinking about how faithful he is? Am I discouraged because my eyes are in the right place? No. If I'll get my eyes in the right place, yeah. man, then I'll respond totally different. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, God is good. Somebody say God is good. Amen. Are you encouraged tonight? Are you encouraged tonight? You know what? It's good for tonight. But when you walk out of those doors, you wake up in the morning, and those thoughts come to you. So what do we do then? That makes a difference. Yeah. Get some preaching. Get something. Get your focus on the Lord. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Somebody say God's good. God's good. Hallelujah. Well, you can be seated. If you need an offering envelope, slip your hand up in the air. The ushers will get that to you. Amen. Somebody say the Lord is so good. When did we do this? We're gonna we'll give a little bit of a report, but on Sunday. But we took, we dropped off. Remember all those cards that everybody, people filled out, and they had cards in them. I think it was 126. But um, went to the police department here in Champaign, and they were so blessed. And I don't know if you guys saw the Facebook post or whatever but they were they wouldn't use the word blessed probably but they were and um, and um, so we just let them know that we're praying for them but you know we went as your representative we went as your that wasn't something that Ron and I did uh, on our own it was our church you know and so thank you thank you for giving to that and thank you for being a part of that amen amen, amen. Hallelujah. So good. So good. Amen. Let's pray over this offering. Father God, we just thank you for the opportunity to give. I thank you that every need of Midwest Believers Church is met, and every need that is represented in this place is met in Jesus' name. And Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise. And Lord, we'll keep our eyes on you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God. God is so good. Is there anything that we need to announce? Anything to oh, man. Uh, 
Oh, we got no Bible study tomorrow. What? But 2022 is going to be awesome. We've already got a meeting on the books that I'm so excited about. Um, praise God. Oh, yeah, I guess. But anyway, <laughs> uh, we're, we're going to host a Living Faith Crusade with Pastor and Mrs. Hagen and the whole team, and we're just fired up about it. It's going to be a great time, and uh, I'm excited about it. I don't know if you are, but I am, and uh, kind of kind of beside myself, this is something that I've had in my heart, or we've talked about for years, but we thought, oh, our building's not enough to handle it, and so anyway, pastor's like, we're coming, and so we said, okay, just for a little pastor know and so anyway he said we're coming and, and we're excited about it in honor that they are coming uh, to Midwest Believers Church in Champaign and so they're going to be here for three days May the 4th, 5th and 6th I believe and so we're we're beyond thrilled about that and looking forward to it and so so we're still working on some other things, but I'll get to say something. I got to say something about that today. Amen. Amen. Well, God is good. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the opportunity that we've had to be together tonight. Thank you for the word that you've given us on praise, focusing our eyes on you. I thank you, Lord. We don't have to have any more down days. We don't have to have any more discouraged days. And you've given us uh, the truth out of the word of God to keep our eyes on you, to keep our hope and our trust in you. And we give you thanks for it, and we give you praise.